Yeah, it is like one of those bendy straws, that's true. We're here at the $9 billion Brightwater Treatment Plant and they have this cool water molecule statue. Have a look at this. That would be the oxygen and two hydrogens or H2O. No, this is the power for the water treatment plant. Well, they're injecting chlorine and fluoride from these tanks here. these LED projector lights, one over here as well. And what this does is it shoots light up at the statue at nighttime so you can see the water molecule. That is our 2001 Audi A4 Quattro, my favorite car. Thank you, Connie Schwartz. This sign actually explains how the Brightwater treatment plant works. The water cycle. Nearly every molecule of water present when the seas formed on Earth is still present on the planet. The water we drink could be the same water the dinosaurs drank. Human water use makes a big impact on the natural water cycle. Cleaning this water after we use it helps to ensure clean for future generation. There's a large infographic here that shows the water cycle. So this is Bright Water is a mile long, 114 acre site that combines the wastewater treatment facility with wetlands and habitat areas, public open spaces, and an environmental education and community center. The Bright Water Waste Treatment Plant cleans water so that it is safe to reuse or return to the environment. It can treat an average of 36 million gallons of wastewater every day with the ability to expand to an average of 54 million gallons of treated wastewater every day. It produces a resource from wastewater, from wastewater, protects the public health and the environment, and works as a good neighbor. These are tips of what you could do at home. Why you should conserve water and keep it clean. Water is a limited resource. Drinking water makes up less than 1% of all the world's water, so we must use it wisely. As a side note, we're talking about fresh water, not salt water in the oceans. So in the glaciers and the clouds, there's a limited amount of fresh water. The easiest way to protect and conserve water is to think about your everyday habits. 
Keep items such as medicines, diapers, and out of the sewer system. Flush only toilet paper. Put kitchen grease and oil in the trash instead of down the drain. Dispose of pet waste, garden, and related chemicals properly so they don't go down the drain. Turn off the faucet while you're brushing or shaving. Run the full dishwasher instead of hand washing dishes. Fix leaky and water inefficient or wasting toilets so if they're leaking, fix them. Shower heads and faucets. Encourage business, family, and friends to value and practice water conservation. The history, all the way back in the 1950s, Lake Washington was too polluted for swimming. Citizens rallied and voted to build and operate a regional sewage treatment plant. They the system they built cleaned up Lake Washington and improved water quality through the central Puget Sound area. By the beginning of the 21st century, the system was reaching capacity and a new treatment plant was needed. The Brightwater system site was sited in 2003, construction began in 2006, and the facility opened in 2011. Here's a picture of the idea here. This is the West Point treatment plant in Seattle. This is a map of the area we're talking about. We're talking about Puget Sound, Western Washington State in the USA. And this is from the King County Department of Natural Resources Wastewater Treatment. This incredibly beautiful chemistry equipment, glassware, distillation columns, vapor recovery units, these are the kind of analytical glassware that scientists use in a laboratory to analyze fluids and to perform chemical experiments, to manufacture pharmaceutical drugs, to, to um, prototype dyes. Now this is art glass. But it's designed to so, what can be found in water. Using the same kinds of principles used to make lab glass, you can make art glass by heating mixtures like soda lime ash glass or borosilicate, so sand and boron. But look at look at the exquisite, beautiful detail here. We're, and I'm looking at this through a glass window, right? Look at these really nifty apparatus. This is chemistry's finest, the glassware. I have a background in chemistry. My dad started teaching me to do chemical experiments when I was a little boy using a chemistry set that he made, which would be illegal to make today because of restrictions, because of clandestine. They even have a garden area. Look at this. Beautiful. One of the more interesting assemblies of pipe connections I've ever seen. This looks like a uh, art installation. In fact, there's the sign that says exactly what it is. South Branch, North Fork Puddles. You can freeze that if you want to read the sign. Have a look at that and we'll go dynamic wide here. Isn't that cool? Meg likes to sniff flowers. Some flowers smell really nice. Look at these beautiful flowers. Wow. Look how pretty that is. Isn't that beautiful? Very. Meg likes playing with flowers. This is um, an area that they bring children because it's a yeah, school, school bus drop off. So this, if you want to bring your children here, if you have children or are operating a school, this is a great place to bring children for environmental education about water conservation and gardening and outdoor ecosystems. This is a nature reserve with trails all around the facility. So you can take them for a long walk. It's a beautiful facility too. They have a large open space exhibition hall here where you can have a function. Those are um, drains, that's a, a drain collector. This is a swamp where wastewater runs off here. We have happened upon a walking trail here that goes all the way down that way. But we need to go back to our car, which is down this way. So we're gonna try to walk on this trail. There's Miss Meg. We're gonna try to walk on this trail to get back to the parking lot.
Megan and I like this kind of Scandinavian design with the wood at an angle, cantilevered out over like this. What a beautiful government building. Good job, King County. King County is also pretty good about trails like this. There's lots of engineered trails and paths. If you want to ride a bicycle, go for a jog or a run. There's beautiful natural lakes like this, waterways. That's a pond, but same kind of idea. The lake's just a bigger pond. The ocean's a giant one. <laughs> but we're just out for a walk. Our um, car's heating up in the sun and some of our food from Costco. No, nothing particularly heat sensitive, but we also don't want to like heat the olive oil to 160. So we're going to just head back to the car now. And it looks like if we follow that along, it looks like it'll get us back to the entrance where we started. And this, this noisy road over here, you can hear the cars. There you can see through the trees. That's Highway 9. Stunning. Look how pretty that is. Even the brackish water is really pretty to look at. So just because you're watching my YouTube video, I want you to recognize something. Getting away from YouTube, you know, put your computer to sleep, close the lid if it's a laptop, lock your phone, get out and go for a walk. Going for a walk improves blood flow. It reduces the risks of stroke, clot, and embolism. It improves your cardiovascular and neurovascular performance. It's good for your heart. It's good for your lungs. It's good for your brain. It builds bone density or preserves bone density and improves your VO2 max or your cardiovascular performance. It's also good for your mood and emotion. In fact, the only downside of exercising is that if you're really out of shape, it can be sort of painful, but only at first. Once you get used to it, you'll start to love it and you'll start to look forward to it and you'll start to feel better and you'll, you'll realize all the benefits I'm talking about. And I pray a blessing over you in the name of Christ Jesus, my Lord and Savior, empowered by the Holy Spirit and thankful to Father God, the Creator, that you're watching my video and hopefully you might have learned something. Thank you. See you around.